page two of the unit two test. So we got a football punter for a football team that wants a hang time of five seconds. And we want a polynomial that would model the height in meters of the football. Well, if we're going to do it in meters, then we're not going to use the negative 16 for gravity that the um, uh, would be in feet. We would use the half a negative half of negative 9.8, which is negative 4.9. And to make it go through zero, where the punter kicks it at the very beginning of time, we would put t or x. I'll accept either. And then again, it wants to be at the ground at 5 seconds. So we're going to do t minus 5. And that would be the height of the football at different times given by this equation. So determine the heights in, height in meters that the football would have to be kicked. And so we can graph this. And uh, yes, I know my battery's low. So clear that one, and we're going to graph this. It's negative 4.9 times x, or times x minus 5. And if I push graph, it goes up to a maximum someplace and comes back down. If I want to see it, I push my window and say, show me higher x's. I'll put a hundred in there. And now I push graph, and there it is. There's a hundred, so it's not going to a hundred meters. It's less than that. I can go second, calculate the maximum that's between Let's see. Well, it happens somewhere between 0 and 5. Between 0, enter, and 5, enter. Probably 2.5. This is so symmetric that it probably is the top at the middle. And it says, yes, it is at 2.5. And the height is 30.625 meters. In fact... When we have a parabola, if we know the center line, and if we know it goes through 0 and 5, we know that we could have just put 2.5 into the equation. And this is what you would get. So negative 4.9 times 2.5 times 2.5 minus 5 could be entered in the calculator and get the maximum height. And we're doing this in meters. Determine the average velocity between this time and this time. Well, if we put uh, 2.5 in, we get a height of 30. So at 2.5, it's at a height of 30.625 seconds and meters. How high is it at 3 seconds? So we put 3 in here. So it would be 3 times negative 2. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So 3 times negative 2 is 6. Negative 6 times negative 4.9. Negative 6 times negative 4.9. And I get 29.4 meters high. at three seconds. So I figured out how high it is at those two places. I could have done it also on the graph. I could say second calculate the value at 2.5 30.625 and 3 enter and it says 29.4 so it's easy to do it right straight from the graph but I want the average velocity. So that's the change in the distance. So I go from the second one, 29.4 minus 30.625, y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. These were in meters and these were in seconds, so my units are going to be meters per second. So 29.4 minus 30.625 will be a negative number because this is it's it's going down. You saw that it was at the top at uh, two and a half and and at three it's on its way down. So it's got some negative velocity. It's going down. That was what number? Uh, negative 1.225 over 3 minus 2.5 is plus 0 0.5 or a half. And this is meters per second and I would expect you to divide this out. And dividing by the half is the same as multiplying by 2, so that becomes out to be negative 2.45 meters per second. And we can take this, divide it by 0.5, and you get negative 2.45 meters per second. Now to get the average velocity of the football just as it leaves the foot, well, we can figure out the height at zero. And if you put zero in there, you get zero. And at just after that, like a lot of you use 0 0.01, I did also in class. So we can put that into the equation. Or I can go to the second, calculate the value at 0 0.01, and it says... If I put 0 0.01 to this equation, I should get 0 0.24451. 0 0.24451. So this is the meters. This was seconds. Seconds and meters. So I want the change in distance. So the change from 0 to 2.4451 is... 0 0.24451 or this minus 0 is this meters, that's the change in the meters over the change in time which was this minus this which is 0 0.01 seconds and working that out I get uh, dividing by this, let's see, I'll put this in here second quit uh, 0 0.24451 divided by 0 0.01 and I get 24.51 24.451 meters per second all right to complete the square, complete the square to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So I want you to complete the square. This is a y equals. This is f of x equals. So you can't just divide everything by 3. So you, we need to factor out the 3 out of the 2 that we're working with. Leave the 10 on the side. So we get 3. Parenthesis. If I divide this by 3, I get x squared. If I did divide negative 18x by 3, I get negative 6x. I'm going to have to add something to complete the square and also subtract it. And that's all going to be in the parentheses. And I'm leaving the 10 by itself. So now, I'm going to have 3 x squared minus 6x and it's going to have to be if it's going to be x minus 6 I'm going to have to do x minus 3 and x minus 3 to get 
minus 3x and minus 3x to make the minus 6x. So the number I have to add it add in the spaces here is minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9. So I add 9 and subtract 9. Okay. These three are what you get when you take x minus 3 times x minus 3. You get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So this is x minus 3 squared. It's times a 3. And here's where people mess up. This negative 9 is also times a negative 3 because we added and subtracted the 9 inside the parentheses. That's why it's important to get that clear that we're doing stuff inside and this is outside. So I have to take the 3 times the negative 9 also. It's 3 times this and 3 times the negative 9 which is negative 27 plus 10. So it's 3x minus 3 squared minus 17 is what this is in the, the vertex form of the equation of a parabola. And it tells me that it's been moved plus 3 and down 17. And that's the vertex. Now you can see it on the graph, but I asked you to complete the square to see this. So you could type this in and find this vertex, find the minimum on it. And the center line, or the axis of symmetry, is right down the middle, which the parabola is moved off as 0 over plus 3, so it's at x equal 3. It's a line, so you have to write the equation of a line, and this is the equation of a vertical line. So if you just said 3, I won't accept that as full credit. Okay. Most of you got that the parent function is uh, y equal x squared. So that goes up, so I'm going to make my y axis or x axis kind of low and put it this in the center. And 0 squared is 0. If I put 1 in, I get 1. If I put 2 in, I get 4. 2 squared is 4. If I put negative 1 in and squared, I get plus 1. I put negative 2 in and squared, I get 4. So I put enough units on the graph to know where it is. So that's my parabola, my parent. Okay, many of you did the minus one, did the outside first, so I will do that since on uh, my other video I did all the insides first. So minus one first. So I'm going to draw the line here again and drop my parabola. That's a, a vertical. shift down one unit. So now to help people see this, most people can draft this, but just to help you, this was 2, 4, so we're going to take 1 off of the 4, because 4 is up and down. And this was 1, 1, and we're going to take 1 away from the y value. This was 0, 0. We're going to take 1 off of that. And 1 off of this one, negative 1, 1. And negative 2, 4. We're doing stuff to the y values. So it's going to be negative 2, 3. Negative 1, 0. 0, 
take 1 off the y value is negative 1. 1 off the y value at 1, see that would be 1 off of 1, which is 0. And 1 off the y value of 2, 4 would be 2, 3. And so if that's 2 units and this is 3 units, so now I've got some units there, so know that I didn't change the sizing of the units. Okay, now i got to work inside. And some of you just didn't pay attention to, we need to do things in reverse order in inside. So it looks like we should do something with the 5 first because it's multiplication. But we're inside the parentheses of the square, so it's the plus 3 we have to take care of first. So, if it's plus 3, it seems like it should go plus 3, but it does the opposite. It goes minus 3. So, this is going to get moved minus 3. So, I'm going to have to move it over a little bit so to be able to see it. So, I'm going to put the axis over here a little bit. Now, we're working on the inside. We're working on the x's. Now, this point was 0 minus 1. This was 1, 0, and this was 2, 3, and I'll just show you what we got to do. we got to take 3 away from the x. So 3 from 2 is minus 1. The y stays the same, 3. So it's negative 1, 3. we got to take 3 off of 1, which makes it minus 2, 0. We've got to take 3 off the x, so it makes it minus 3, minus 1. Minus 3, minus 1. This place is minus 1, 0. If we take 3 off of minus 1, it's minus 4, 0. This one was minus 2, 3. If I take 3 off of minus 2, it's minus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3. Minus 5, 3. I'll put these on here so that we can follow what happens next. And this is minus 4, 0. And minus 3, minus 1. And we did, what did we do? We did uh, horizontal. Shift. Left three. Okay, so it's moved over three. And now we got to do the point 0.5. Point 0.5 seems like it should get narrower. Half as wide. That's a half. So it's not, though. It's twice as wide then. So we got to take... Uh, it's not going to... So it's not going to make it compress. It's going to make it stretch. Horizontally. by 2. We're actually going to take 2 times all the x coordinates in case you're struggling with seeing how to do this, doing the coordinates. So 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. So this is going to get pushed further negative. So I'm going to put the, the y-axis way over here. So this is going to go to negative 2, 3 negative 2, 3, and this one is going to get changed to negative 4, 0, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. This one's going to be negative 6, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1. 
and this is going to be negative 8, 0, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0, and this would be negative 10, uh, 3, which is about there. So I'm, it says half, and so I'm doubling all the x's. Minus 2, 3, minus 4, 0, minus 6, minus 1, minus 8, 0, etc. Tried to slow down. Hopefully, folks understood that a little better than you did before. 